Professor Lee Keng Hock, uh, President of the College of Family Physicians Singapore. Uh, we are here today to interview Dr. Chiu Chin Hin, uh, one of the most senior physicians in Singapore. And uh, we'd like to ask him uh, his knowledge of how the college was formed in the early days, as well as the history of medicine in Singapore. Uh, Dr. Chiu, thank you for coming. Thank you for asking me. Uh, perhaps we start by asking you to share with us uh, your, your knowledge of how the college was formed in the early days. Yes, uh, I remember clearly in the late uh, 60s, there was a visit from the president of the Royal College of General Practitioners of UK. I think he was Lord Hunt who visited Singapore and uh, he suggested that the general practitioner should form a similar body. The academy had al already been formed at the time for many years and he, he suggested an option of having a chapter of general practitioners. Uh, either that or a body be formed akin to the college in UK. Uh, unfortunately, the academy had a, uh, in its constitution that uh, members should not be in general practice because the academy was a specialist body at that time. Uh, and so I think uh, soon after that, uh, a group of general practitioners formed the College of General Practitioners of Singapore. Uh, I think it came to fruition, I think, in 1971, if I'm not mistaken. And the first president was Dr. Srinivasan. He had been uh, vice chancellor of the university, a very respected physician. In fact, he and my father were contemporaries uh, uh, in Singapore General Hospital, where we are now. And uh, this is the place where I spent, where I, my first year, my first decade was spent here, as my father was a physician together with uh, Dr. Srinivasan. In fact, Dr. Srinivasan and his family were our neighbors for a year or so in the grounds of General Hospital. And we became friends because during the war years, uh, Singapore, was, uh, Singapore General Hospital was taken over by the Japanese military for their use. And, uh, and uh, the patients and the staff had to move out of General Hospital. And so uh, Dr. Srinivasan was moved to KK Hospital where he had, had a medical unit. My father and his colleagues were first moved to Yo Chu Kang uh, Woodbridge Hospital. And after nine months, they moved to Tan Tok Seng Hospital, where he headed the Tan Tok Seng uh, unit, medical unit with Dr. Clarence Smith. The, uh, Tan Tok Seng Hospital and KK Hospital were the two general hospitals serving the local population at that time. So our relationship with Dr. Srinivasan was very close. In fact, he was a, we regarded him as a family friend. And, uh, and as tuberculosis was arrived, uh, something had to be done for the treatment. And both he and my father were founder members of SATA. And, uh, and, uh, and he worked at, uh, he worked at uh, Tan Tok Seng and, and General Hospital for a short period after the war before he went to UK, to London for his uh, MRCP. He came back. Uh, my father went into private practice by looking after tuberculosis patients because uh, that was a big problem. So that was the scene uh, of post, the immediate post-war period. Uh, also at that time, uh, Singapore was a British colony. And uh, it took quite a number of years before the British recognized that the local doctors were as good, if not even better, than they were. 
they were very uh, good. Uh, despite that, there were a few uh, excellent teachers. And the two that I can uh, recall was Professor Gordon Ransom and Professor Eric Mickey. They were excellent teachers and they were very sympathetic to the local doctors. And, uh, and eventually, after a few years, it was a unified service where local doctors and uh, uh, the expats were considered as equal. That was the scene uh, in the immediate post-war period. At the same time, uh, our doctors had to go abroad to take their higher qualifications because there were no local higher qualifications at that time. And, uh, and that was one of the reasons why the academy and the College of General Practitioners were formed. I think uh, that was an uh, advance. And that also coincided with the political changes and development of Singapore because uh, Singapore was a uh, colony and gradually evolved into self-government and then independence. That was over the period on in, the, in the late 40s, 50s and 60s. And that also coincided with the educational progress of, uh, of Singapore, where uh, the College of Medicine together with the Raffles College became the University of Singapore, University of Malaya in Singapore, and, uh, and eventually it was the a national university with the Faculty of Medicine uh, uh, here. Dr. Srinivasan was, I think, the second vice chancellor of the university because he had a big role in the formation of the university. And, uh, and although he was in private practice, he was a well-respected physician. And uh, I was so glad that he was uh, elected as the first president of the College of General Practitioners in Singapore, now the College of Family Physicians. So, uh, so Dr. Chiu, for the final part of this interview, we'd like to talk about this very uh, historical or historic moment where we are forming a chapter of family medicine physicians in the Academy yeah, of Medicine. Yes. And uh, so I'd like to understand, uh, you, you said earlier that we considered starting a chapter way back when, in the early days of the Academy. Uh, uh, yes, uh, way back, uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I think uh, the, the Royal College of uh, General Practitioners in UK had its own college and probably because of that one of the reasons because of that uh, reason uh, Singapore also followed that pattern but uh, it was it, it was mooted that uh, the other option was forming a chapter within the Academy of Medicine but at that time uh, the Academy really had no chapters at that time uh, it, it was about to form the chapter of uh, physicians and chapter of surgeons, but uh, uh, its, con its constitution did not allow uh, members to be general practitioners because it was a specialist body. And in fact, this is, I think, the, whether, it's a, whether family medicine is a speciality or is a discipline, I think it's, a, it's really playing on the words where I'm concerned. So when uh, when uh, I retired in 1991, uh, and later Dr. Chen Aiju wanted to uh, propose the formation of a specialist accreditation board, I was uh, asked to be on the committee, in fact, to lead the committee. And, uh, and in that uh, discussions, I f one of the things I felt was that we should also include, besides the 35 disciplines and specialities that we included, I thought at that time probably family medicine should be a discipline. But from unofficial context, 
with the college. And uh, I think the college was not too happy also at that time. I don't know why, For uh, probably <laughs> you can find out the reason. Because uh, they felt that they were not a specialist body. They were a discipline, so to say. Uh, and for that reason, I think the SAP was formed with 35 uh, specialities, uh, but not including family medicine. Strangely enough, the Hong Kong Academy of Medicine uh, that was formed uh, included uh, general practitioners, included family medicine under that under the academy. Uh, so in recent times when uh, uh, this idea of forming a chapter within the academy had brought up, I fully supported because I had always thought that uh, the word discipline and speciality is really, they are, to me, is synonymous. Uh, so uh, I gave all support, and I think uh, some of your past presidents were also very supportive. Lee Suan Yu, Chok Pak Yen, Go Li Gan. Uh, I know them all very well, and, uh, and I'm sure it will come, up, come, come to fruition very soon, I'm sure. Uh, the master of the academy is uh, very uh, uh, supportive, and uh, and I think at the last AGM, if not mistaken, we passed we passed that uh, the resolution. I think so. I think uh, now it's up to uh, the college to, to 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 start the ball rolling and see how we can uh, have the first few founder. Uh, fellows of the Academy of the Chapter of Family Medicine. So at our college AGM, we also uh, talk about this. Yes. And the general body also passed a res resolution strongly supporting this move. Good. Yes. And I think, uh, and and this will only upgrade the standards of family medicine. Mm -hmm. I'm no, I'm I'm very confident this will be the way to move forwards. So next and year will be the 65th year of the Academy. Yes, and uh, so and I'm sure <laughs> you'll see family medicine there represented, yes. and probably uh, the president as the first chairman of the chapter. Uh, <laughs> well, probably we will do. We will form a. We are going to form a, yes. a fellows committee in the college. Yes, uh, which will then sort of translate into the, the chapter yeah. in, yes. the, in the academy. But yeah, but whatever it is, I've told the master that the relationship of the academy and the College of Family Medicine must remain strong and continue to remain strong. Yes. And they have to work together for the progress of medicine in general. So uh, yeah, I, I fully agree. I think talking to you and listening to, to you about the early days, I think it's the it's a very close uh, comradeship and collegiality of the senior, senior doctors that move the profession along. Yes. Even I, I'm very surprised that even BGMS was formed by this. It's almost like a grassroots movement coming. Yes, so. yeah. and in fact, uh, I must take off my hat to Dr. To mm -hmm. and Professor Shamugradam, mm -hmm. because they they were really the two 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 persons who were really instrumental. Of course, with the support of the Academy Council, mm -hmm. I think, uh, and that was a very historic meeting that we had as the hall. It's a pity that we did not take photographs <laughs> to record. Amazing. Uh, but uh, but uh, I think Yonkhet did write, uh, did produce some minutes mm -hmm. in the Academy's archives, I think, of that meeting. And I think that really transformed uh, the medicine in Singapore. Yeah, the right. The advance yes. actually started from that moment. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that uh, medical education and training has always be, been my passion. So that's the reason why I'm still <laughs> Uh, closely attached to uh, the postgraduate school. So, Dr. Chiu, thank you very much for sharing your memories. And well, <laughs> thank you. It's, it's a pity that uh, my memory is fading a little, but I still have some recollections of uh, the old days. Yes. Thank you, King Ong. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Chiu. Thank you. Okay.